Good afternoon and thank you so much for joining us. We've got quite a few of you joining us. So rather than miss out, if we were obviously face to face, you'd all be able to network um, and meet each other beforehand. So rather than missing that opportunity, feel free to pop in the chat function, say hello, introduce yourself, tell us a bit about your business. If you want to put your contact details in there, feel free. Also, why don't you tell us what you got up to at the weekend? The weather was nice. So, you know, give us some inspiration of things that we can do. I wonder how many people have barbecues on Saturday. Again, let us know what you got up to. We're just going to give it a minute or so and then we'll get started. Um, make sure that when you um, pop in the chat function, you send it to all attendees and panelists so everyone can read your messages. Um, also, if you're new to Zoom, I'm not sure if people are, but we'll just go through some house rules. Um, along the bottom, you can see there's a tab that says participants. Feel free to flick through and that will show you who's in the session with us today. You're welcome to then send them private messages, say hello if you know them, feel free. So we'll just give it another minute and then we will get started. So, Ollie, what did you get up to at the weekend? Uh, it was beer garden weather, wasn't it? That's that's what I got up to. Um, yeah, it was nice to see some friends. That was the that was the biggest thing for me. Um, after a long long while of of wanting to to meet my friends, I managed to get upstairs in Gonzo's. For those of you that are in Norwich, you know that it's not the easiest place to get into at the moment. But yeah, I was very lucky. Got a walk in table near the fire pit. So happy days. I mean, that is just like oh, I can't even think of the phrase. But that's a hard thing to come by. I was going to say, where did you go? Did you have to pre-book? Did yep. you get a decent table? Did you have to queue? But it sounds like you just timed it perfectly. Yep, absolutely. My, my partner and I, we walked, uh, we walked past it all every day for the last two weeks, um, and was wasn't able to uh, to get a table. So it just just so happened, it, it you know the stars aligned for us to to get a table for sure. Love that. So we've got a couple of people in the chat. Hi, Missy. I'm the business relationship manager for Buy Local Norfolk. I was dropping off gazebos to some of our members over the weekend as face to face outdoor events are now starting up. I love that. Um, hi, Andrea from Norfolk Chambers. I'm really looking forward to the session. Well done and getting your table at Gonzo's Ollie. Love that. And we've also got Hayes. We've got a little Norfolk Chambers crew going on here. Um, customer experience team, it's great to be here. I can't wait to hear from Ollie. Barbecue and fire pit for tea tonight. Oh, I think we know where we're all going. Hayes is, I think it's only six people. So I shotgun one of those places. Um, round heads for barbecue and fire pit. So we'll get started and then afterwards, after I've handed over to Ollie, I'll chase um, the people who haven't turned up yet. So thank you again for joining us on this Monday afternoon. Um, so before we get started, I wanted to let you know that the B2B exhibition will hopefully, fingers crossed, be taking place on Thursday the 14th of October. The B2B exhibition is Norfolk's largest business to business exhibition, free to attend and attracting hundreds of businesses on the day. B2B is a highlight on the Norfolk events calendar and I'll pop a link to the event page in the chat shortly. So create and broadcast your business podcast. It's 2021 and podcasting is bigger than ever, but many businesses remain unsure if it's right for them. Are you one of them? You wouldn't be alone in thinking this. A podcast can present businesses with a fantastic opportunity to share their expert insights, experiences and valuable insights with their audience. It's not a content channel for sales pitches. We'll cover why this is within the session. So Ollie from Social B will be covering what is podcasting, podcasting potential, Social B podcast learning, podcast do's and don'ts, content ideas and distribution. So following the presentation, there'll be a live Q&A where Ollie will answer all of your burning questions. So please use the Q&A function as and when you have a question. Don't worry if you accidentally put it in the chat, I'll pick this up and we'll make sure we cover your questions. So Ollie, over to you. Thank you. So um, 
I mean, that's that's summed up my start, really. I was about to go through what we're gonna what we're gonna discuss today, but we'll work our way through the slides. Um, great to see the chat box being nice and active. Feel free to to pop those questions in there as we go through. We've defined some uh, time at the end for Q and A specifically, but if there are any questions that are really burning and you want an answer there and then, I'll try and uh, I'll, I'll keep the chat box open and we'll answer as we go along. Um, if not, as I said, right at the end. Um, so. Uh, yeah, thank you for that intro, and I guess we'll dive right into who Social B is, uh, what we do, and then who I am. Um, so this is Social B. Um, we're a digital marketing agency and a social media management agency. Um, we have two sides of the business, of which I sit on one um, in particular, but we have the training side of the business, which is why I'm stood in front of you here today. And we have the, um, yes, yes, Angela, we will be getting the slides. Um, so. Yeah, we have two sides of the business. We have digital retained and we have training. Training, we go into businesses that are pretty confident with their marketing, but they want their team to be better at it. And that spans across digital and social. And equally on the other side of the business, we've got retained where we, we do the work for you. So we take the work off of the plate of, of the marketing team or potentially it's a business that doesn't even have a marketing team and they want to outsource. So that's, that's us. Um, and me, I, I'm the influencer marketing trainer. Um, I've worked in influencer marketing for the uh, best part of five years now, and I've been delivering our training for two of those years, um, working with PR agencies in London um, and, and giant uh, global um, uh, telecoms businesses as well. So a right range of clients, all of which I sort of feed into one another, which is good fun. Um, the reason why I'm here today to talk to you is one, because I'm a trainer, but two, because I am one of the hosts on the Social Bee podcast. It's hosted by our CEO, Lindsay, but as with the job title, she's quite a busy woman. Um, and that's why I'm here today to talk to you about our podcast and the opportunities really that podcasting could present you, your business and any future um, content marketing strategies that you've got in place, whether it's this year, the year beyond um, and so forth. So let's define a podcast. Um, there are lots of different podcast definitions out there, but this is my favorite one, and it's from Oberlo, um, which are a training provider um, for a whole range of things, whether you want to learn how to knit or whether you want to learn how to do Google Ads. They're a very wide range company. Um, but this is their definition. It's a recording of a discussion on a specific topic. They're often found on iTunes and Spotify, but are sometimes hosted on websites. So they pretty much hit the nail on the head there. A podcast is a recording of a team, an individual, something like that, having a discussion. And we'll dive into a bit more of what a podcast structure looks like as we move through the session. So let's talk about the podcast landscape. The podcast landscape, as, as we've already touched on in the session, it's, it's exploded. You know, there have been 500, uh, sorry, there were 500,000 podcasts, active podcasts in 2018. And in 2019, which is when this, uh, in 2020, which is when this st statistic is from, that jumped to 380, uh, 80, 350,000 um, active podcasts, which is huge growth in such a short amount of time and really shows the, the demand for it there as well, because people aren't just putting out content for the sake of it. There is a reason behind it. And again, we'll touch on that later. 65% uh, use mobile. This is a really interesting statistic for me because it's not just on the desktop and it's not just on mobile. However, mobile is, is the, it seems to be where the demand is because that's where most people use iTunes and Spotify. But for businesses, and I'm talking from my own experience here and, and from a social B perspective, businesses have a real opportunity for the desktop world of, of people listening to, to podcasts because you, know, you guys might be sat in your office or sat at home, but you're working at the moment and these are your work hours so you might be sat on your desktop it might be worthwhile listening to a podcast granted through spotify or or itunes or through a website um, and interesting interestingly enough 75 percent of all podcast listeners and this was a survey carried out two years ago and then it was carried out last year um, as well um, and, it, and it found the exact same uh, result that 75 percent of listeners are looking to learn that's really interesting for us as, as marketers, as business owners, whoever we've got in this group, that, that the people listening to podcasts are there to learn. They're not there to be sold to. And again, we'll, we'll touch on to why that's really, really important a little bit later. So I did some digging um, over the last couple of weeks and I stumbled across the new Facebook update. 
Mark Zuckerberg was quoted in, a, in an interview just last week saying that audio is where he wants to spend an awful lot of his time and energy. They're investing in live audio rooms, which uh, don't hold me to it, but is supposed to go live in the next couple of months. And essentially what these will be are like Facebook groups and Facebook messenger chats but just for audio clips. So it's like leaving each other voice notes. It's like leaving each other voicemails. Um, and that's all you can do in those groups. So it's a really interesting take on, on the, the rise of Clubhouse and the rise of Stereo, an app that we'll touch on later, um, and really trying to get his foothold in the market of, of voice, really. Um, and podcast hosting is another thing that he wants to focus on. Interestingly enough, 170 million different uh, podcasts are, are referenced on, spot, uh, on, on Facebook. And uh, I've got the statistic here, 170 million people are already following podcast Facebook pages. So if the moment Facebook starts hosting podcasts on the platform, it's gonna be one of the biggest platforms to host your podcast on because people are already there following the podcasts that they listen to, they just can't listen to them there. Um, and then the final update that he wants to focus on is sound bites, which will be in the feed. And they're going to be, they confuse me a little bit because there's a lot of demand. Um, uh, no, sorry, there'll be a test for the demand for it. Um, but it's short form audio clips for capturing jokes, inspirational quotes, and, and these are from Mark Zuckerberg here, inspirational quotes, poems and thoughts and moments in time. So he really sees a place in the market for his users, for users on Facebook to, to leave these voice notes on, on Facebook, on, on the feed and just let people listen to them. Um, I think it'll be a fantastic opportunity for people to market. I think there'll be short sound clips of, you know, buy this product or listen to my podcast or head, head over to my Instagram. But I think it really does um, put a lot of pressure on his, his faith really in the users committing to not viewing content, just listening to it, um, which I don't see going away anytime soon, but for the longer form, more podcasty type content, I think it's a fantastic opportunity. So podcasting as a whole, it sounds great, but the real thing to bear in mind is, is the hype around podcasts and around anything in general. This here is the, is the search term, um, sort of statistics of Clubhouse, the phrase Clubhouse. You might have all heard of it. If you hadn't, it, it, it really blew up at the start of this year. Uh, it, it was an invite only platform for people to host live discussions um, and debates and, and talks and things. Um, and, it, and it exploded. But as you can see now, it's near enough about where it was with people talking about it, which is really interesting that the hype was there, but potentially the content wasn't or potentially the just the demand wasn't you know they created this exclusive bubble and everyone wanted to be a part of it but now now they don't so if we apply that same methodology to podcasts you know everyone's talking about podcasts but let's bear in mind is a podcast really something that we want to be doing is it right for our business so podcasts they're not just audio only there's a lot of talk about podcasts being an audio recording but for a lot of businesses they can be so much more an audio there, there is an audio only, and, and that you'll probably find on Spotify and iTunes. Um, but for a lot of content creators out there, particularly some of the bigger, bigger podcasts, they have an, a video element to them as well, um, whether that's video and, and audio, and they release them separately down different channels, or it's just video. You know, some people host their podcasts on YouTube. Um, one of the best examples of, of completing all four of these, these forms is the Joe Rogan experience. And as I'm not aligning myself with any of the content he puts out there, there's, you know, some far right content, some conspiracy theorists, but he has one of the biggest podcasts in the world. And that's, that's undeniable. He was signed into a contract with, uh, he is signed into a contract with Spotify, uh, a $100 million deal um, for exclusive distribution rights of his podcast. Um, and that's his audio only channel. He has his video channel because all of his podcasts are recorded in video and a lot of the promotional material is made in video. He has the audio and video on, on his YouTube channel. And he also has an animated series for his podcast. So some of his podcast episodes are animated um, and he's got 10, 10 plus million subscribers on YouTube. So he, um, he has a vast audience to share all of that content with. Um, but to sort of break that down into why that'd be relevant for us here today, 
it's it's the fact that don't just limit yourself to audio only i'll be honest with you it's the easiest way to get into podcasting but if you if you know that your audience respond to a visual element if you know that your audience are quite visual learners potentially they take in infographics and um, that kind of content quite well maybe an animated version of podcasts would work quite well as well so that's just a summary of where podcasts are and what they do um, but let's take a look at some business podcasts that, that, that exist and that the, um, the examples that are out there first we've got social minds and social minds is very marketing heavy it's one that I, I listen to it's one of um, my most listened to podcasts and it's hosted by um, a couple from from social chain called Theo and Eve. And the purpose of this podcast is to educate. That's, that's the idea of it. It's, it's to put you in a room, and this is their, their catchphrase, it's to put you in a room with the brightest minds in marketing. And that in itself is a fantastic summary of what a podcast could be for you, for you your business, um, and, and ultimately to your audience. Um, social minds do it really well. They bring in industry leaders in, People that work at Netflix was the one that they, uh, someone senior at Netflix, they brought in last week. Um, and, and just people very high up in the industry, very high, highly regarded um, individuals that bring some expert expertise um, and some really, you know, detailed insights or, or, you know, practical examples as well from their own experiences. And they bring it onto the podcast. And we'll, we'll touch on, hopefully you're getting all of this, you know, the, the ways that a business podcast can help the listener. Um, and that's that's the real real important crux of, of, of what I want to get across today is your podcast has to help the people that are listening to it. It doesn't have to, it, it can't feel like it's invading into their time, into their space. eBay for business is a really interesting one. I hadn't heard of it, but when I was looking into delivering this course, it it caught my eye. It's, it's eBay's own podcast. They used to call it um, eBay Radio. Um, and it's a weekly or semi-weekly um, podcast that that they share how to run a business on eBay, but they don't do it from a point of you must run your business on eBay. They do it from a point of let's, 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 you know, champion entrepreneurs. Let's, let's make your second income, your first income. And, you know, there, there's massive opportunity in that market, particularly at the moment with COVID and, and, and things, you know, there've, there've been plenty of small businesses opened um, and, and doing this kind of thing, you know, selling online. Um, and there's been a real demand for it. It's, it. it's, I've listened to a couple of episodes and it is really useful if you were looking to get into that space. Um, and then moving on to the Gary V audio experience. Um, if any of you follow any marketing material, or you spend any time on social media, you might have seen his face. He is, he's a lot of places um, and very quite self-promotion-y. And to be fair, this, this is not uh, dissimilar to the rest of his marketing uh, material. It's, it's quite self-promotion um, focused. However, it, it, it comes with this message of you can get here. And that's where he sort of, he's built his niche. He's built his brand on, I started a small business. I'm now a multi, multi-millionaire. My company's worth X. And he's got loads of series within his podcast. He's got hashtag Ask Gary V, where he gets people to ask the questions that he then puts to industry experts or to himself, you know, as a very experienced marketer. And he's got Daily, uh, Daily V, which is more short, short form content documenting his life. But what that does is give you more of a background of who he is, his personal brand, his personal story, and what goes on behind the scenes of the business. So moving on, what can we learn from, from these business podcasts? What we can learn is that they they have a mission and they have a purpose. And for a lot of those, it's to educate or it's to inform or it's to inspire. And they're the key, key bubbles that I want you to, to leave with today. It's, it's educate, inspire, um, and really share your purpose, um, uh, share your message of, of, of that. So, you know, we want, we want young entrepreneurs to grow, fine. We want you to learn more about solar panels or solar energy. Great. That's that's what our podcast wants. Wants uh, that's our purpose. Um, different structures. There are a load of different structures of, of podcasts. Those three examples there um, just define that. So the Gary V one is is mostly him, but then he brings guests in um, as as co-hosts and and as interviewees. Um, you've got the the eBay for business, which does have hosts, 
but most of it is about bringing experts in for a particular thing. So for example, one of the episodes that I tuned in for was all about sourcing. It was all about finding suppliers, what makes a good supplier, that kind of thing. And they, they brought them in for that specific episode. And then Social Minds, you've got two static hosts that then interview and pick the brain of an industry expert. So there's loads of different um, style, uh, different structures there and loads of different styles as well. You know, every podcast has their own style in the same way that you or I have a very different way of communicating with one another. Our podcasts would probably be very different, you know. Um, so the way that I like to look at it is, is you've got, if, if your brand image is quite corporate, if you've got, you know, quite a white papery image, then your podcast should reflect that. If you've got quite an informal, quite a chatty image, which hopefully Social B try and put forward um, in, in terms of the, the chatty personality, that's the kind of podcast we've created. And likewise, Social Minds have. So that, that, there's, the, there's the two different ways that the that, that podcast can be, can be defined really. Podcast concepts. So as, as just off the back of what we were saying there, you know, you've got the interview technique. You bring in someone who really knows their stuff and you pick their brain. And that knowledge that you're pulling out from them, you're sharing with your audience and theirs. You've got the solo host. This one is potentially for the, the, the entrepreneurs who are working on their own, potentially the industry experts that really are at the top of their field and they, they know what they're on about and they just want to share it with, with their audience and really demonstrate that that's what they know. You've got the multi-host. This is a great way to have people bouncing off one another. And as well, as well as that, you're really gonna get to know the people behind the brand. So with, um, with multi-host, Social B is a great example of that. You know, I, I, I'm a fairly regular person on the Social B podcast, but Lindsay, our, our CEO, is, is the, the, the head honcho of the podcast. And she does all of these kinds of things. So she does interview people. We recently had Rand Fishkin um, on, our, on our podcast, who's very senior in the SEO world, if, if, if you know. Um, and then we've got the multi-host where Sue, one of my colleagues, or Rich or, or someone else will join Lindsay and I and we'll bounce around the ideas of, of what's new in, in the world of digital marketing. So that, that in itself is another topic that you, that you could be discussing. You've got internal guests. So that would be inviting like my colleagues, Sue or Rich or Paul on to discuss their experiences, the clients that they're working on at the moment. What pain points are they finding with Google and, and things like that? And then you've got external guests, the example of inviting Rand Fishkin on, for example, uh, to speak with my colleague, Lindsay, and, um, and they can bring their own expertise, their own insights, um, and, and as well, if you're really crafty with it, they might share it on their own social media. If you're bringing in someone quite, quite senior in the industry, what you're gonna want to do is hopefully get them to share the content that you've created with them because you're going to get the, the props off the back of that. You know, you're gonna piggyback off of their personal brand. So your business podcast, where do, we, where do we want to be by the end of this session? And where do we need to start to get there? So you need to identify your purpose. What is your purpose of your podcast? Ultimately, it's probably to lead to more business because that's what we're all here to do. We're all here to, you know, drum up more business. We're here to be known by more people and ultimately increase that, that bottom line. So what, why, what is your purpose of being there? What, what are you serving to your audience? Is it to educate them? Is it to inspire them to do something? Is it to entertain them? You know, although 75% of podcast listeners are there to learn, 25% of them are there to be entertained. You know, there are plenty of podcasts out there that, that people listen to just for the sake of, you know, oh, I like their voice or their personality is really bubbly and I get enjoyment out of listening to them do a podcast. Um, so if that's your purpose, then own it and, and create your podcast based on that. And with that really, really setting the foundation of, of your podcast and your strategy. Begin with your, pod, with your business branding. You know, as, as I've just touched on, if your brand image is, is quite white paper based, it's quite um, knowledge, deep, knowledgeable insights, um, data driven, your podcast should probably reflect that. It might not be the most on brand if you open it with some light flute music and you try and make it all friendly. You know, you've really got to make sure that it's on brand with the brand that you've ultimately spent the time crafting throughout your, your entire business operation. Um, and equally, if your business is, you know, quite a friendly, bubbly, come and chat to me every day, 
um, kind of business, if you create a podcast that's incredibly cold, corporate and, and sort of matter of fact, it probably won't resonate with your audience and you won't see the results that you're looking for. So how do we find your, your, your tone of voice? It's exactly what I was just saying. If you're matter of fact, and you know this, you know, by the content that you already share, whether it's on social media, whether it's the way that you talk with your clients, you know, are, are the clients that you talk to, do they respond better to an informal discussion or do they respond better to, you know, uh, a very matter of fact, these are the figures, this is what it's going to cost you, this is where it's going to get you. Um, if that's the case, build your podcast off the back of that. So there's, there's a dream team for creating a podcast. And these, the, these aren't necessarily lots of individual people. You know, it's, at Social B, we, we all do a little bit of this. Um, but you want to have someone who, who's looking after the strategy, someone who's coming up with the idea of where, what is our podcast going to be doing? Where is it going to be going? Who are we going to get on? That kind of thing. You know, the big overarching plan of the podcast. You need a writer, potentially, you know, if you're going to do an interview with, with an industry expert, you don't want to go in there totally, totally unpre unprepared. So you might need a writer for it. You need a host. I would suggest having a host or, a, or, or two hosts regularly. And the reason for that is because the, one of the reasons of making a podcast is to show your audience the behind the scenes of your, of your business, you know, the personality of of who would be delivering their work or who would be selling me the certain product. And having a regular host can really do that because the, your audience can not only recognize, you know, oh, this is a social B podcast because Lindsay's speaking on it, but you can really get to get to grow with, with that person on the, on the podcast. You can hear them know more things. You can hear them take in more knowledge through, through other people as well. You're probably going to need a guest. Certainly to start with, I think it's really important that you that you identify people that ideally you would want to have on your on your podcast and you know you might not get them straight away because you've got a podcast that nobody listens to yet but eventually you you should have a, a hit list basically of, of who you in an ideal world would want on your podcast and really work up to that um, and then um, the tech you know the equipment that, that's involved and we'll, we'll touch on that in just a moment um, editor as well um, you want to be making sure that your podcast sounds good you know, um, there's, a, there's an argument between content over quality and quality over content. And I'm very much in the middle. Um, there are certain people that very much sit on the, on the quality of said podcast over its content. But then if you've got a great sounding podcast, but the stuff that you're saying no one really cares about or isn't interested in, what's the point? But equally, if you're giving the most valuable gems in the world in your podcast, but the noise is all crackly and you can't actually hear the person who you're interviewing, that it's likely that your audience are going to turn off and not actually consume the content. So a happy medium between those two is really where you want to be. That's the sweet spot. Um, marketer and a publisher. Ultimately, you should be your own marketer for your podcast. You know, if you're putting out content that you're proud of, shout about it. You know, you want people to come and listen to it. And, and, and you want it to be shareable as well. Um, one of the best ways to market a podcast is actually word of mouth. Um, and I know from experience of being on the phone to you know, prospective clients, some, something that we do at Social B is, is share blogs off the back of a discovery call with a client, say, saw this, thought of you, thought it might be helpful. If you've got a podcast that is gonna be helpful to someone, share it with them. You know, it's, it's not only your voice talking to them, but it's gonna be valuable at the end of the day. So a podcast format could look something like this. You know, these are elements of within a podcast. You've got introductions. Um, typically, most, most of the successful podcasts out there don't just dive in straight to the audio. If they do, it might be a short snippet. And this is a li little, little trick here. Um, that if you, if you know that there's a, a nugget, a real gem of, of information in your podcast that, that your guest has said, that you've said, put it right at the start and cut off, then do your introduction, and then go into the podcast, because that those first few seconds really get the audience hooked. It's the same with video content. It's the same with all other content out there. You know, you want your audience to be hooked. Then you've got your outro. It might include music. It might, it might even include a call to action, you know, and we'll touch on why that isn't a buy, buy, buy call to action. It might be a check out our website, check out our free resources, that kind of thing. Then you've got the content, you've got the body of the episode. You know, this is 
This is the, the meat and potatoes of your podcast. This is the questions that you're asking the interviewer. This is the real nuggets of information that you're trying to get across. And you might have an ad break um, in there. Typically, a business podcast probably wouldn't. But interestingly enough, uh, podcasts in general see about 60% better return on investment than other marketing channels um, with, with the podcast ads. Um, so I know some very successful podcasts out there that are sponsored by certain brands. They see some fantastic ROI. Um, but again, that's not really relevant to the business podcast. So let's dive right in. So recording your podcast, you might be using your laptop. You could be using your mobile phone. You could be going to a studio or you could be doing it over Zoom. There are lots of different ways to record your podcast and there are lots of different ways to produce a podcast. What, we, uh, what I'm delivering right now could be converted into a podcast should, I, should we want it to, you know. Um, we could turn the, 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 the video recording into an MP3 and put it out onto the internet. It suddenly becomes a podcast. Um, and I wouldn't recommend that, but actually there are some very successful podcasts out there that do that. Um, the Marketing Meetup is one. Um, if any of you are aware of, of Joe Glover, he runs a very successful marketing community. Um, and his, an awful lot of his episodes on his podcast series are, are just the Zoom recordings that he's had of people delivering sessions not dissimilar to the one that I'm delivering today. Um, so it's not my favorite because you can't really paint the picture of what you're missing with the slides. Whereas if something is recorded audio only, you know, you, or with audio in mind, you can sort of paint the picture with your words an awful lot better. You've got studio um, and we'll touch on pirate studios, which I recommend uh, in just a moment, or you've got it over Zoom. The biggest thing to test with Zoom is the audio quality. Um, hopefully I'm coming through all right. Oh, thank you for that, Kelly. Um, yeah, so that's Joe Glover. I really recommend, um, recommend his stuff. He's, he's a lovely bloke and shares some great content and gets some good um, guests on as well. Um, hopefully I'm coming through okay Zoom audio quality wise and video quality wise, but the biggest thing to test, certainly before you hit that record button, is, is how am I sounding, how am I looking if we are doing visual, um, visual podcasts, but yeah, that audio um, is really important because as I've said before, you can have the most amazing knowledge to share, but if, if you're crackly, if you're cutting in and out, um, nobody's, gonna go, nobody's going to listen to it and nobody's going get, to get what you're trying to get across. So these are some, some examples of equipment that, that we use, uh, that I've got experience with um, personally. You've got the, the one on the left there. Uh, they're both from a brand called Blue Microphones. Um, I'm, not, I'm not on a brand deal here. I'm not on a sponsorship, you know, a, affiliate program or anything like that. Um, they're available from most online retailers that sell this kind of kit, um, like Amazon, for example. Um, the one on the left, about 50 pounds. The one on the right is the more higher end one between 90 and 110. So realistically, as a business expense for a, for a marketing channel that will take um, investment over time, I think either of those two are great options. Particularly, they are better than the, the laptop microphone that I'm talking to you through now. Um, and, and the one on the left we started with at Social B, the one on the right I've got at home um, here. So yeah, I, I recommend them both. They both plug into USB and they both plug into the, the software that I'm gonna to touch on in just a moment. So Pirate Studios, those of you that are in the Norwich area or Norfolk area, um, the, I recommend Pirate Studios no end. They, were, they built a brand on becoming DJs, uh, DJ studios, but they also have now started including po uh, podcast studios. So they've got two in the one in Norwich and they're 10 pounds an hour flat rate. Um, and you can go in there and knock out three podcasts if you really wanted to in a day or certainly what we used to do at Social B before, you know, lockdowns and things, we, we would go there for two hours, one morning per week um, and, and create our podcasts there. The, the equipment there is very, very expensive that, that, you know, you don't have to buy, you're essentially renting it for 10 pounds. Um, and you do even have built into the, each of the studios um, the ability to stream live from the studios. So if that's something that you were interested in, um, that would be worth looking at. Uh, Moving on to editing. So you've got your raw file. This is your, this is your podcast episode version one. And as you can see, there are some big gaps in that, in that middle section there. And I can almost guarantee that that sharp line in the middle is me going, ah, oh, I wish I hadn't said that or cough or something. And it happens, you know, we're all human. It, 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 
the, the advantage of creating a podcast that you edit is you can get rid of these things and you can make it sound as professional as you like, really. Um, and and uh, this program here is called Audacity. It's a really good program for, uh, it's free. It's free to download off the internet. Um, and and all you do is plug in your, you, you can record your audio straight into it or you can record your audio elsewhere, whether it's through your phone or through Zoom or wherever. Um, and put it into put the file into here and then edit it. You can chop and change the bits where you've coughed, you've you've stuttered. You know, I, I do that in our podcast episodes. I stutter all the time, um, and I certainly cough. And we apologise to my colleague Alex, who then has to uh, then has to edit it out. We sort of take a pause, say sorry, Alex, and then we crack on. Um, but something that's really keen that I'm really keen to share with you is the audio noise reduction feature. So it it's really intuitive. It does work well. Um, it's a really good way of cancelling out that background noise. You know, it won't necessarily get rid of a dog barking, but it might get rid of the crackly, crackly sound of a microphone or the whir of a, of a washing machine, something like that um, in your audio recording. So it's really worth doing. Even if you don't think that your audio needs it, you can run your, run your uh, highlight the audio clip, select noise reduction and click OK, play around with the, the filters on there. I won't dive into it too deep, but play around with the, the filters on there and you can end up with some really, really, uh, really classy, really professional sounding audio. So how to get music into your podcasts? It's something that a lot of people have and then get in trouble for potentially because they haven't got the rights to certain music, but these two platforms and these are called Pixabay which I didn't even know did music. I didn't know did um, royalty free music, but they do. Um, and the one on the right is the YouTube audio library. That's where I've always got my royalty free music from. It's really simple to find the music that you're after, uh, whether it's background music, whether it's intro music, there's all kinds of stuff on offer there and it's all totally free for you and totally royalty free as well. Um, so you can use it, whether it's in your intro, whether you're running it in the background of the whole podcast for social B, we have a nice bit of intro music um, for the intro clip that Lindsay speaks on, and then it filters out into, into just us, us having a chat. So distribution, the, there is a seven step process to the distribution uh, to getting your, your podcast heard on Spotify and iTunes. It's a seven step process that involves making sure your audio file meets the requirements um, of the subscription. And what I've actually got is, is, is two links with some summaries of what that looks like. And I'll give that to, to, to Kayleen when I share the slides um, and we'll, we'll make sure that that gets over to you um, if, if that's something that you're interested in getting your podcast heard um, on those two channels. We do, we have our podcast on, on, on them um, and we use different channels to, to, to make that happen really. Um, hosting as elsewhere. So hosting on your own website is what I'm really keen to share with you today. Um, and this is an example of what it looks like on our website under our resources section. Um, the, the good thing about this is one, it's, it makes your website a one-stop shop. Um, two, if you add transcripts to your podcast, it really helps with your SEO. So for those of you that don't know about SEO, um, Google rewards you for the content based on your site for answering people's questions and for being relevant to what they're searching for. If you can upload a transcript of the podcast that you've created um, for uh, whatever subject it is, you know, actual insights um, that you can take uh, into 2021 or our digital marketing roundup, which is what I, I take part in most regularly. Um, you know, if we can upload transcripts of that, it's really going to help our SEO exactly like it would sharing a blog on your website or, a, um, or an article or something like that. The really good thing about, uh, another good thing about putting your uh, podcast episodes on your website is to use the example of what I was saying earlier, that if you want to share a resource with, um, with you know, a prospective client or potentially a client that you're trying to nurture and upsell to or, or just maintain the relationship, send them a link to your own website. You know, it keeps them in your bubble. It keeps them in your your sphere of, 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 you know, social B being in the top corner or, or, or your logo, um, making sure that you're, they're very intrinsically uh, involved in just looking at your brand, looking at your content. The statistics for uh, listening to 
um, podcasts on the web are not that great. I'll be honest with you. The, the graph for Spotify is not as good as iTunes. iTunes is the best for length in terms of attention span of the audience, retention all the way through the episode. Spotify is a little bit worse. Websites are pretty bad. But the reason for that is most people that listen to podcasts on websites are just looking to get a feel for that podcast. They're getting a feel for that brand, you know, almost like kicking the tires of a car before you buy it. You know, is this for me? Is this the kind of podcast that I want to tune into for the next 30 minutes, 60 minutes? Most of the time, the answer is no. On Spotify and on iTunes, the, the, the retention is a lot higher because potentially they've searched for you or they've been recommended it by the platform because it's similar to what they're already listening to. So they're already in, 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 interested in the kinds of things that you're discussing. So steps, the Stereo app is um, a really interesting new development this, this year, might have come out last year. Um, and it's, it's, the, it's like a live podcast recording. That's, that's the best way to describe it. So you can, in a very similar way to Clubhouse, um, for those of you that, that got on the Clubhouse wave or, or didn't, um, it's, it's quite an informal approach to recording a podcast because you can invite people to essentially tune in and listen to it. Um, oh, we've got a question here. That's okay. I think that's absolutely a great way to handle it, Kathy. Um, you know, if the app is already distributing it um, across, across the different podcast platforms, it'd be interesting to know what those podcast platforms are. Um, but I think, yeah, absolutely uploading the blog, uploading a copy to the blog section is, is a great idea. The transcript thing will be really valuable in that, in that part because that's where the audio, um, that's where the, the search engines at the moment will be um, sort of filtering through it's still very early days in terms of search engines listening to audio to try and um, make things, uh, find search results based on that. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Um, so you've created your podcast, but it's not just gonna be, it would be a waste to just let it statically sit there. So what can you do? You can turn it into audio clips, you can turn it into video clips, you can turn it into blog posts, articles, social media content, it can inspire conference talks. It, you can get invited elsewhere because of that podcast. Um, so to touch on all of these, you know, you've got, let's say it's an hour long podcast. In there, you're gonna have some absolute gems of advice for people within your industry. That little gem could become a social media post. It could become an audio clip that you share on other channels or you just keep resharing to keep the content fresh. It could become a video clip. You know, we've, we've had uh, things that we've discussed on the podcast that have then become a video that we share on social media. Um, blog posts can come off the back of things that are raised within conversations. You know, um, we, we can use the things that we talk to guests about to inform the things that we write blogs about. So it's, it's really, it can make your content creation really full circle. Amazing, Kathy. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. Um, using Otter to transcribe the audio and then add, add to the blog under the recording. Sounds great. Sounds like you're smashing it. Um, so get, uh, Inspire talk, Conference Talks, very similar to, to Inspiring Articles, but you could submit, and this is talking from personal experience of submitting to conferences to try and get talks as a business. Um, send them the, the, the podcast or send them the clip. You know, it's already you talking about it. They can, they can see what... The, the insights that you bring to what would potentially be a conference talk and get, getting invited elsewhere. There are plenty of other podcasts out there to try and get featured on, you know, in, in a world where there are 850,000 podcasts, chances are there are people discussing about things that you could weigh in on. And um, there's no harm in just asking them, you know, I've, I've, I've done it myself. I've, I've contributed to a conversation on LinkedIn and said, I, I would love to get involved on your podcast. Um, and, and I have. So it's been really interesting to see that that's the way that the industry has gone, because ultimately we're helping them by creating content for them. And they're helping us because we're then creating content off the back of their content. So the Social Bee podcast, um, it's, it's relatively new compared to some podcasts, but we have been doing it quite a while. Um, we have generated business from it. Um, I wasn't able to pull some specific data, which I wanted to, um, but it's been, it's been really interesting doing the deeper dive on who listens. We are listened to across the world, interestingly enough. 
Um, and that's the real power of, of, of having a podcast um, because it can travel, you know, it being on Spotify, Spotify is, is one of the biggest streaming platforms in the world. And if you happen to be a recommended suggestion to someone who was listening to a, a marketing podcast in Brazil, you're suddenly getting listeners in Brazil. Um, and obviously the key thing there to remember is making sure that the content that you create is, is really relevant to your target audience because there's no point in creating content that's relevant to other people. But when it comes to them wanting to buy from you, you don't actually service the products or, or um, that they would be interested in. So what is a podcast? And these are the two, these, this is the, the double-edged sword or the, the yes and no that I want to share with you today is it's, it's for knowledge sharing, it's for industry insights, it's, for, it's a listening board and it's behind the business. So this is what a podcast is and we'll touch on what it is in, in the next slide. So it's a place to share your knowledge. No one else in your entire industry has had the exact same experience that you have had. And that is incredibly powerful for you to share. You know, even, and I'm talking from my own experience now of I really struggled with the idea of talking and delivering training to PR agencies that I thought worked on bigger clients than me. I went and had the conversations with them and it actually turned out that my experiences were totally different. Theirs might've been on a different level, but mine were different and I was there then able to sort of contribute to their conversation, continue to their, contribute to their growth based on my past experience. And that's very, very true for all of you, whether you're um, you know, an executive in a, in a huge company, whether you run your own small business that you started last week, no one in your entire career history has had the experience that you have had. And you can share that with people. Um, and, and if you're in an industry that, that is, is very um, community led and community based, which most industries are these days, there's real value in that and people will start to see that. Industry insights. If you are really hot on, on hot on the press, uh, hot off the press, you're really good at getting news um, up to date, and, and you're you're really up to date. You're really on the pulse of your industry, whether that's because of the the the, the, the length of time that you've spent in the industry, or whether it's just because you are really really hot on it. Um, using a podcast as a way to share those insights is a fantastic way of doing so. Um, whether it would previously have been a blog post, you know, that could be a podcast. Um, and then a listening board. Be, listen to your listeners. So gaining feedback from, from your podcast by saying at the end of the episode or even at the start of the episode, you know, let me know what you think on social media to this podcast or to the things that I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, to the things that I'm discussing today. Listen to them. You know, they, they, will be, they will be your best listening board. They're, they'll give you the best feedback that you can possibly get for um, bang for your buck, really. You know, ultimately, they're the ones who you want feedback from because they're the ones that you're trying to talk to. Um, so, yeah, listen to, listen to your listeners. That's, what, that's a little phrase that I want you to, to leave with today. Um, and behind the business, it circles back to that personality kind of thing. You know, people buy from people, ultimately. And if, if you can show individuals or even, you know, people that work in buying for a business, the people behind the business that they're buying from, that can be an incredibly valuable thing. Um, you know, uh, for us personally, we've been able to display our very talented digital marketing executives knowledge through the medium of podcast when otherwise they wouldn't have had to, um, they, they would have had to be rolled out at a conference or a network meeting. Um, I'll answer that question at the end, if that's okay, Glenn, because um, I, I think that might be a, a common question. So what a podcast is not, it's not a platform to hard sell your product or your service. Um, something like 90% of all podcasts are listened to at home. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to be sold to when I'm at home. That's essentially a tele salesperson calling me up and saying, do you want to buy double glazing? That's not the kind of relationship that I want to build with a with a brand that I'm potentially looking to build business uh, to build a relationship with, um, as as a business, you really need to place value on the value that you're adding and the knowledge that you're sharing and the almost um, you almost don't want to sell at all really with a podcast. And I know that's quite counterintuitive. And as someone with a sales background, I I hear you. I'm with that. Um, but with with such a captivated audience. It's a very, very quick way of turning them off and potentially putting them off you in, in, in 
um, in the long run as well. So it's not a place to sell your products. It's a place to make your, your name and your brand aware and make your audience aware of, of who you are, what you do and what you know and what you can bring to them. It's not a place to bombard your listeners. You know, it's not, this isn't TikTok, this isn't Vine, this isn't Instagram. You don't need uh, podcast content every single day. Podcast content needs to be valuable, not viral, in my, in my opinion. So a, pod, a podcast needs to have something that's worth listening to. Obviously, if you've got things that are worth listening to, you know, twice a week, then by all means, create a podcast twice a week. But I think once a week, maybe once a month, if you've got a roundup of what you've been doing, I think would absolutely, absolutely be fine. And it's not a channel to give up on right away. Don't give up. You know, um, podcasts aren't going to be a success overnight. Um, and that's, that's the harsh reality of it. You know, for a lot of these marketing channels, particularly content marketing, a lot of it is making your audience aware of who you are, what you do, and why they should trust you. So don't give up. Uh, again, Melissa, I'll, I'll answer that one at the end. Great question, though. So podcast success doesn't appear overnight. A successful podcast is built over time. And that's very true. You know, you've got podcasts that have been running for years and they take the first six months just to build up that audience and that community around the podcast um, to, to really start seeing results. And by results, I mean potentially leads coming through or you're getting invited onto other podcasts or that kind of thing. Um, and that's how I would measure the success of a podcast is because it's, it's up to you guys how you want to measure it. But personally, I would measure success on the leads that it's potentially generating um, or the overall sentiment of your audience, you know, oh, I heard about you through X person on that podcast. Um, so action plan, this is what I want you to leave with today. I want you to come up with your podcast concept. So whether it's a host, whether it's a panel, whether you're interviewing people, um, whether you're, what the idea is to just talk about your own business and your own experiences, whether it's to talk about your wider industry, answer all of those kind of questions yourself. Um, and build sort of like a strategy around where you want where you want your podcast to be, your objectives and how you're going to measure its success. Gather your team, you know, whether it is just yourself or whether you're bringing people in um, to help you, you know, your editor, your marketer, your, your writer or your guest, um, bring them all together. Hit the record button, edit it, release and promote. You know, that's the process. Um, it's the sooner you can start putting content out there that you're proud of, the sooner you're probably going to start getting results from, from your podcast. The best step that you can take towards creating a podcast is to actually start one. And if you're already doing one, um, just, just start to apply what I've, what I've covered today. Promoting, we should all be doing that anyway on our own social media channels, you know, because we're creating content that we're proud of, that, that we should want to share that on our social media and, and potentially on our websites and, and via email as well. You know, we've done email marketing campaigns to get listeners and things like that. Feedback and results, really listen to your listeners, as I've said before, and, and get that feedback because ultimately that's going to inform you on how to make a better podcast um, and how to service your listeners better. Um, and then obviously, you know, track your results as well. So the floor is yours now. Um, I'm here to answer questions. And I've got a couple. So um, how do I find podcasts? If I want to find a podcast about Roman roads, are they indexed somewhere? Um, so the best thing to do would be to go into a, a, an actual podcast place. So whether that's on iTunes, Spotify or online. And yes, yeah, search Roman roads or potentially other keywords. So you could find an episode on Roman roads hosted by someone else that, 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 mainly, uh, that mainly talk about something else and that's just a specific episode. Um, but if that's something that you're really interested in, um, I'd be happy to, um, if you want to drop me an email or anything after this or a LinkedIn message, for example, um, we can try and find some together that you, you either want to get yourself on or, to, or just to listen to. Um, so hopefully that's helped. Um, how long slash short should a podcast be? Um, subject to what you're talking about, really, um, and subject to your plan. If you've, if you've booked Pirate Studios for two hours and you finish in 30 minutes, fine. If I was that, uh, if I was you, I'd probably try and record another one. But it's all about the content that you're trying to share. So there isn't much data around a, an industry average. So for all podcasts, you know, that all podcasts should be X length of time. 
a lot of that will be trial and error for yourself. You know, what, what do your audience respond best to? Um, and do you think short form, short snappier content, so a 15 minute summary of what you were up to this week, something like that, or a more in-depth breakdown of a client that you've worked with recently um, or a project that you worked on, something like that, that could be an hour and really guide people through the process that you went through. Um, it all really just depends, but a lot of that will be will come from your own experience as, as well. Hopefully that helps. Um, I have some invites. For, <laughs> I'll, I'll take one, Nikki. I'll take one. Um, and uh, yeah, is that all questions? I'm hosting some group on podcast, 100 listeners per week. Um, there's a question from Angela that says, what's your thoughts on whether podcasts would need to be a regular schedule or could be used to focus around a specific event such as an opening or a product launch? Great question. Um, so I think the, the, the industry advice is to have a podcast that's regular um, because then your audience knows, you know, this is, this happens every week, I should tune in or this happens every month, I should go check out what Ollie's talking about. Um, however, I think there would be power in creating a series specifically for, and that could be in the build up to or in the, in the post um, event um, sort of approach. Um, I think there would be potentially, you know, if you're hosting an event that's going to have guest speakers, um, I'm talking from a music perspective now, um, from, from my own background, you know, building up interviews with the artists, essentially that's what you would be doing in the build up and then promoting them that way. That would be really good. That would sort of show those people and why they should attend the, the event. You know, this is the personality of the person that you're going to come and see or, or see perform or, or talk or whatever. That would be really interesting to see how that goes. Um, and then post, um, po a post podcast, I guess you could call it, um, would be potentially audio recordings of the event itself or, um, or something like that. Um, it would be interesting to see what kind of event you were on about as to whether there would need to be a visual element um, included. Thank you. There's also a question from Nikki saying, I'm a host on a group podcast and we get about 100 listeners per week. How can we grow this? We just use social media at the moment. So thank you, Nikki. Um, social media is, is a great way to do it. Email marketing is another way, and that could be a blanket email, that's, uh, whether you've got an email database or not, um, whether you um, can build one. I, I, I'm an absolute champion of, of building one. Um, but the fact that you've got 100 listeners per week is fantastic. What I would suggest is getting those listeners to share with other people. Um, and the way that you would do that is potentially at the end or potentially at the start, say, share this on your social media that you're listening to our podcast. Um, and, you know, we'll reach out on our social media or we'll do a giveaway or something like that. You know, all, all of those different kinds of things to engage your audience the most. Um, I think that almost it's almost like a consumer generated content version of a marketing campaign is for them to tell their friends to look into to your podcast and why they should. Um, so maybe um, and I'm really thinking off the top of my head here, but you run an Instagram campaign, uh, you run a, an Instagram campaign that says share on your story with um, what you learn in this, in, in, a, in our podcast, and we'll shout you out on the next podcast, because people love a shout out, people love to be shouted out on, on something, whether it's the radio, whether it's on a podcast, you know, something like that might work. Um, and if not, yeah, email, I think would be would be a great way to go, or trying to get yourself featured on another podcast, potentially a bigger podcast in the, in the industry that you're in. And then through that way, hopefully you'll, you'll migrate some of their listeners over to you as well. Thank you. And then we've got the final question. How important is a script? Does it matter if you go off piece, if the buzz is there? Um, I don't think so. I don't think going off script is bad because ultimately um, that's you. And that's your personality coming through. You know, that, that's what I'm a massive champion of with, with business podcasts is that person behind the brand. Uh, it's the people behind the company that you're trying to promote. So going off piece isn't necessarily a problem for me. I think having not a strict script, unless you're interviewing someone and you know that you need to ask X question at X time, 
then absolutely stick to a script. But I think simply bullet points of what you want to discuss in that particular podcast would be great. Um, again, it would probably be subject to the setup that you've got. If you're interviewing someone, you probably just want bullet points of, of the questions that you want to ask or the things you want to bring up. Whereas if you're um, delivering almost like an article to them, um, you know, and, and you want to make sure that you convey everything, I'm very guilty of getting to the end of saying something, hit, 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 stopping the recording and then realizing that I've forgotten to say something. So I definitely rely on some form of script to a certain degree. Um, but yeah, yeah it's, it's subject to the situation that you're in. Thank you. So that seems to be everything and we're bang on three o'clock. So it's just to say thank you so much, Ollie, and thank you so much to everyone um, that joined us. Um, I will share a copy of this presentation with you shortly, as well as the recording as and when it is available. I've also popped in the chat a link um, to a survey just to get feedback on what you thought um, how you thought the session was, if there's anything else you wanted. Um, it just helps us shape our program. And also, as Ollie said, feedback is so important because you're the listeners and we are doing this event for you. So we want to make sure whether we hit the mark, whether we missed anything. Um, yeah, any feedback is massively appreciated. So yeah, enjoy the rest of your Monday. I hope you have an incredible week. Um, and Ollie, did you want to say a final farewell before we sign off? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you all for, for being here. Thank you for listening and thank you for your feedback as well. Um, so obviously you'll get the slides with that. If you could scan that with your phone and, and give us the feedback, that would be amazing. It means a lot to me. It helps me be a better trainer. It helps me produce better content for you guys. Um, and you'll also get a list of, um, of these resources here. Um, so it'll be the copy of the slides that, that myself and, and Kayleigh will get over to you. Um, we've got a resource hub as well signing up to our newsletter you'll get some resources from us and obviously our podcast as well that would be silly for me to not mention that um and myself i'm ollie moles on linkedin if you want to connect with me um more than happy to connect discuss podcasts discuss influencer marketing but that's not what we're here to discuss today um and yeah hopefully um speak to you all soon thank you all for being here perfect see you everyone later bye